Street Fighter VI has been a roaring success so far, and everyone's loving it. Not only is the gameplay a delight, the story mode through World Tour feature has generated a lot of discussion. This has renewed interest in Street Fighter's lore. But what is Street Fighter's lore? It can get a little confusing for the newbie. So, to help with that, we have this video. Here, we'll explore the story of Street Fighter, starting from the very first game. Think of this as a Street Fighter retrospective. With that said, welcome to another Dash Fight video. I'm Jammers, and let's dive into the convoluted world of Street Fighter's lore. Fighting games are a well-known genre today, but they only came about in the 70s when the iconic heavyweight champ was released in 1976. It is credited by many as being the first fighting game in existence. It was a successful game and it spawned several other games that took inspiration from it. By the middle to late 80s, there were fighting games everywhere, but most of them featured the same pattern. Two players facing one another with basic moves with the first to hit the opponent declared the winner. However, some games were making innovations, including Yi Air Kung Fu, otherwise known as 1-2. What made the game stand out from the crowd was its introduction of bosses with unique and sometimes impossible moves. This has become a staple of Street Fighter, with characters that can do stuff that no ordinary human could pull off. In 1987, Takashi Nishiyama, who had honed his skills making a game called Kung Fu Master, helped create Street Fighter. Now we can talk about all the great things Street Fighter did, but one of the most amazing things was how detailed the story for each character was. But before this, the fighting game characters had no backstory and were simply vehicles for entertainment. With Nishiyama, who went on to implement his story ideals in King of Fighters, he wanted his characters to have a life of their own. And so, we got one of the first games to give their characters a backstory. So, Ryu was an orphan whose past is shrouded in mystery. He has no recollection of his parents and nothing about his past life. Ken was his close friend who trained alongside him and was his companion in all things while Sagat was a great martial artist full of pride and who considered himself the strongest in the world. So, what happened with Street Fighter 1? Street Fighter was the start of a revolution in the fighting game genre. It brought a few innovations that made such a beloved game, including the idea of characters from various parts of the world and new ideas like punch and kick strengths. Capcom decided to deal with this by introducing pressure-sensitive controllers. Therefore, if you wanted to perform a light kick, you pressed lightly. Conversely, if you wanted to press a heavy attack, you had to really match the controller to get the desired result. Needless to say, this caused a fair few people to hurt themselves. Nothing serious. But enough to annoy anyone. Capcom would eventually introduce the six button layout we all know and love which helped people vary their attacks. Also introduced was the concept of special moves. Before now, you simply had punch and kick as options in fighting games. But with Street Fighter, different characters could now do special moves and we were met for the first time with Ken and Ryu's iconic Hadouken. Interestingly, very few players knew these options existed since there was no manual explaining how to do moves. But once people discovered what was possible, people spent hours trying to figure out how to throw Hadoukens and Shoryukens. The moves that were given to Ken and Ryu from day one have remained a part of their toolkit till this day. In the story, Ryu, who had no recollection of his parents or past, had been trained as a fighter. He considered himself an enigma, with no real connection to a world around him that seems to understand so much that he doesn't. What is life? What does it mean to love? Ryu saving grace is his master, Goken, who took him as a son and has trained him since. Ryu has grown into a great fighter who was trained in the art of Ansatsuken. But how does he know he is actually strong enough? Thankfully, Ryu finds out about a tournament that has all the powerful fighters from around the world convening in one place to fight. This includes his friend and sparring partner, Ken. Also invited to the tournament were Mike and Joe from the United States, Gen and Lee from China, Birdie and Eagle from England, and Aidan and Sagat from Thailand. From the selected fighters, Sagat was the most powerful and was even known as the Muay Thai King. Ryu, fighting his hardest, was able to beat everyone standing in his way till he made it to the finals against Sagat. Sagat was a powerful warrior that's standing at over seven feet. 
towered over all challengers, including Ryu. Ryu, however, was hungry for victory. Unfortunately, hunger isn't necessarily the only ingredient for success, and Sagat's superior skill was more than Ryu, in his current state, could manage. Sagat was victorious, but the proud Muay Thai king took things a bit too far, taunting the hero and even granting him some perverse sort of clemency. As Ryu watched his victory slip away, something took over, something that would be his struggle for the foreseeable future. In an act of pure rage, Ryu unleashed a rising uppercut called the Shoryuken against Sagat. The shocked fighting champion was hit by a punch so powerful it seared his chest and knocked him out. Therefore, Ryu was the winner of the first ever World Warrior tournament. But this did not feel like victory. He had not won fair and square and now Ryu was aware that there was something evil residing in him, ready to take over him if he was not careful. As for Sagat, his defeat left him disgraced, so much that his former student Adon abandons him. Also, Sagat is offered a place at the side of the most dangerous man in the world, M. Bison. Sagat joins the criminal organization Shadowloo, losing his former glory as a proud warrior, now made to serve as an underling. Street Fighter's original end saw Ryu win outright against Sagat, but that did not lend itself well to the dramatic tone of such a monumental fight. So we got the whole Sagat Scar thing added to proceedings for a bit of spice. The next game to come out was the monumental Street Fighter 2. But before then, we must examine the next chapter from a story perspective, since that is our purpose here. To fully delve into the timeline of Street Fighter leading to Street Fighter 6, the next chapter takes us into the murky world of the Street Fighter Alpha series, with all that has happened there, a lot of which has a bearing on the main story. Street Fighter 2 was behind Capcom, and they had more or less reached the end of their tether as to how many times they could release Street Fighter 2 with just a few additions here and there. It was time for a new game. However, moving on to Street Fighter 3 was going to be a bit of a problem, as they still had a boatload of their CPS1 and CPS2 arcade systems on hand, and simply throwing them away was not a good idea. So. The proposal for a game that would work on this older system and still play well was put forward. Relative newbie Hideaki Itsuno was drafted as their head honcho to plan the game and he needed to oversee a Street Fighter that still retained its identity while also appealing to a new audience. Itsuno had since mentioned how helpful his relative inexperience was in making the game as it enabled him to bring forward fresh ideas that were a little different from what Capcom was used to. As a man who still had a consumer brain, he was more relatable to the audience and could pinpoint what they would like to see in a Street Fighter game. Nowadays, Itsuno is a household name, having headed games like Devil May Cry and Dogma. But Street Fighter Alpha was his start and in a lot of ways was the springboard he needed both in terms of experience and confidence to get him going. Street Fighter Alpha was put on a very strict timeline. Three months, which was an insane schedule for making a video game. Obviously, it took longer, but not much longer as the game was ready in about six months. The name, Street Fighter Alpha, was not the first choice as Capcom initially tried out Street Fighter Legends and Street Fighter Zero, which was the name that the game went by in Japan. For an American audience, it felt that the name Street Fighter Zero could have negative connotations, so they went with Alpha, which was a nice name, but also referenced the fact that this is a game that was going back to the beginning. From a story perspective, it was a way to bridge the gap between Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2, both of which had distinctive characters, but very little story behind it. Alpha acted as a way to expand on the Street Fighter lore and even retcon a couple of actions. For instance, the scar on Sagat's chest was explained as an injury from Ryu who was now dealing with the Satsui no Hado. From a gameplay perspective, Street Fighter Alpha was a very fascinating game. See. Capcom has always been a serious company. This means that the company prided themselves on making games for true gamers who liked their games punishingly difficult. However, with Alpha, there was a compromise as the game was made with the mindset of making it more accessible to lesser skilled players. On top of that, a few more things were added over the course of the Alpha series, including turning the Super Bar into three separate blocks of meter and introducing the ISM system 
which gave players a lot of variety in terms of their style of play. The game also added some elements that are common in anime fighters, like air blocks and chain combos. We also go over a fair few new characters, including some from the Final Fight series, like Relento and Sodom. Story-wise, as mentioned earlier, Street Fighter Alpha was the genesis of the Street Fighter lore, and there were two major themes that were evident. One, the origin of Ryu and the main conflict he had to face. Two, the rise of M. Bison and the establishment of his motives. There were other plot points in the story, which involved all the other characters but this was the major purport of the narrative. It was also the, one of the only Street Fighter games that was not created around a tournament. For Ryu, after winning the first Street Fighter tournament, he was now a wanted man. For Bison, Ryu was the perfect vessel to host his consciousness. This is because Bison's psycho power, while supremely potent, was also destroying his body. This was what led to Bison to create Kami and the dolls as he wanted different alternatives to host his consciousness. It is also worth noting that one major price Bison had to pay for his power was the loss of everything good and humane inside himself, and for some reason, Rose, the mysterious magic wielder, is the physical manifestation of all the good in Bison. It has been floated that Rose was a student of Bison from a time we cannot ascertain, and while growing into his evil self, she was the recipient of all Bison's good energy. Bison was not the only one interested in Ryu, as Sagat, who had lost to the protagonist in the first iteration of the game, was back for revenge, and obsessed with getting one over Ryu. This led Sagat down a dark path, including a stint as a Shadaloo operative. He even lost his title as the King of Muay Thai, losing to his former student Aedon. Even more worrying was the fact that the raging demon known as Akuma, who was responsible for the death of Ryu and Ken's master Goken, was also looking to lay his hands on Ryu. This is because, in defeating Sagat, Ryu had unleashed a power known as the Satsui no Hado, which Akuma was the main practitioner of. Seeking for a worthy opponent, Akuma wanted to see for himself if Ryu could be that person and strove to test him. Akuma also defeated Gen, who was from the first game and was an accomplished fighter who was unfortunately dying of leukemia and wanted to die at the hands of a true fighter. Akuma won, but refused to finish Gen off. Ryu eventually faced Akuma, and Akuma was satisfied with Ryu's compatibility with the Satsui no Hado, but was unimpressed with his current level, telling him he had to come back when he was stronger and showing him a glimpse of what the Satsui no Hado could do in the hands of a competent practitioner. He leveled an entire island and encouraged Ryu to continue down the dark path. Meanwhile, Bison's hunt for Ryu was impeded by characters who wanted Bison dead for one reason or another. Chief amongst them was Chun-Li, whose father was killed by Bison. Chun-Li attempted to date down the mad dictator, but failed. Another Bison hunter, Charlie Nash, came up against the villain because he was responsible for the corruption in the United States Army. Charlie is victorious against Bison, but is in for a rude shock as his team who was supposed to come and pick him up and apprehend Bison turned out to be on the villain's side and shot Charlie in the back. Bison continues to hunt down Ryu and is eventually victorious after abducting and torturing our hero. He also pumps him full of psycho energy and unleashes him against his enemies. What Bison did not realize was that one of his dolls, Kami, who was another prime candidate to receive Bison's soul, had been broken free from his control and his plan to have her murdered had failed. Kami was broken free by Dalsim, whom she had been ordered to kill. Free from her brainwashing, Kami was now determined to destroy Bison and knew just the way to do it. She pulled it off by destroying the Psycho Drive, the giant machine that was capable of revitalizing Bison and causing untold damage to entire cities. Bison unleashes Ryu on the protagonists who have been joined by Sagat. Sagat had experienced great character development after his loss to Ryu and Aiden, and had even let Dan Hibiki, a character whose father he had killed. Dan's father is why Sagat wears an eye patch. Badass, right? Win against him. Sagat sought to break Ryu free from Bison's brainwashing and was joined by Ken and Sakura, a young girl who idolized Ryu. Sagat broke Ryu free and they all ganged up to defeat Bison. Bison survived though and was hoping that his psycho drive could revive him, but thanks to Kami, his great machine was destroyed. 
though he warned that if he died, she and the dolls might die with him. But Cammy used the psycho drive to set the other dolls free. In the ensuing drama, the facility where this all was happening exploded. However, Cammy and the dolls were saved by none other than Vega, one of Bison's lieutenants and one of the assassins who had gone after Cammy and failed. Unfortunately, all this was not enough to end Bison, who had somehow managed to attach his essence to Rose, and the gypsy woman was tasked with the thankless task of housing Bison. The story might seem grim, but it had a lot of bright spots, including Ryu and Sagat's newfound friendship, more like a rivalry, and Cammy's salvation. She would end up with the British intelligence agency known as Delta Red, where she found the home and friends. Bison was not dead, and Ryu still had this dark energy that he had to deal with. This was a perfect springboard to launch us into the next game in the series, Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2 is easily the most popular game of the series and is considered the magnum opum of the Street Fighter series. To tell the story of Street Fighter 2, we need to go back a bit. The making of Street Fighter Alpha was exciting, but it was on the backdrop of an incredibly successful game in Street Fighter 2. This means that with Street Fighter 2, there wasn't the same level of confidence in Capcom's ability to churn out an incredible fighting game. Part of Street Fighter 2's legacy is how different it is from its predecessor. While the original game was a great effort and did a lot for fighting games in general, it could not hold a candle to what Street Fighter 2 did. Many credit Akira Nishitani and Akira Yasuda, formerly known as Akiman, as the linchpins behind the game. In a bid to separate Street Fighter 2 from the original, a lot of new concepts were incorporated. One of the biggest ones was the care and focus on the various characters that would appear. There were eight characters, later 12, and four bosses, and their uniqueness was a great reason for Street Fighter 2's popularity. The fighters came from around the world, and each designer had their own character to focus on. This made for quite a bit of diversity in terms of playstyle, visuals, and moveset. Street Fighter 2 is pretty crazy, but if Nishitani's original ideas had been taken on board, it might have been even crazier. The man had ideas to do stuff like design underwater stages where there was limited air supply and stages situated high up where the loser falls to their death. We saw this concept play out in Killer Instinct. But even without Nishitani's wilder ideas, Street Fighter 2 is still pretty out there. This was in part due to the fact that the developers decided to only approve ideas that made them laugh. This caused for characters to develop weirder and weirder moves. For instance, Dalsim's long limbs should never have been a thing, but it was just so funny that they kept elongating, and we have the fighter we know and love today. Another innovating thing that Street Fighter 2 introduced into the world was the idea of balance. Before Street Fighter 2, balance in a fighting game was not such a big deal as most of the characters played the same and there weren't so many things to incorporate. But with all the whimsical and insane moves that characters in Street Fighter 2 were privy to, balancing the game to ensure that a character wasn't too broken was of the utmost importance. So. It meant that some characters like Chun-Li and Zangief needed to be nerfed to ensure that they weren't ridiculous. That said, they were unable to balance perfectly, meaning that Ken ended up stronger than Ryu and Gaia was a problem with his strong special moves. Computer AI in Street Fighter 2 was also a big deal as Nishitani made a crucial decision by allowing the game's AI to make use of the same moves that players had available to them. This made it so that the computer seemed more natural and fun to engage without the broken moves that littered the fighting game scene at the time. Other innovations included adding a feature where there was a 1 in 256 chance of pulling off a special move from a normal. This was considered a bug by players, but was put there on purpose to let players know that special moves were possible. Also, later iterations of Street Fighter added the mirror match, which was impossible beforehand. Street Fighter 2 was a worldwide sensation. But what happened in the story? Where we left off, Bison had been defeated and his psycho drive destroyed. Ryu had seen firsthand the power of the Satsuino Hado, and Kami had been dropped off unconscious at the base of the British intelligence team known as Delta Red. The story of Street Fighter 2 starts with the return of Bison. 
See, Bison had borrowed the body of Rose after the events of the Alpha series and would eventually return to another body made for him by his mad scientist. This body, however, was slimmer and less bulky than his Alpha iteration. It was explained that this was the case because his Alpha form was the dictator at the height of his power, while his new body in Street Fighter 2 was not as powerful. This caused Bison to resume his hunt for Ryu in the hopes of using his body to become the ruler of the world. To that end, he organized the World Warrior Tournament and invited all the top fighters around the world to join. There would be several entrants with many of them there to take down Bison. Chun-Li came to avenge her father's death. Gaia was there to avenge Charlie. E Honda was there because a lot of his sumo students were caught taking a dangerous drug that Shadaloo had produced. Ken joined because Ryu invited him, while Ryu himself was there as always to test his strength. Kami returned to investigate her past ties to Shadaloo and find out as much as she could. The tournament was in Thailand, and Bison had Sagat, Vega and Balrog as his allies in the quest for world domination. Street Fighter 2's end is a little ambiguous, but it is accepted in most quarters that Bison failed to get Ryu's body and was beaten by the mysterious Akuma who was simply looking for someone worthy to defeat. Other things that occurred included Kami's reunion with Bison, where we got that unfortunate mistranslation which suggested that Kami and Bison were lovers of some sort. We now know that this isn't true, but Bison did reveal that she was discarded and was useless to him now. Thankfully, the Delta Red team were there to cheer Kami up and remind her that she had a home with them. Who won the tournament? We don't know. In Ryu's ending, he simply walks away in search for the next challenge. There is some comfort in knowing that Bison got his butt handed to him by Akuma, which makes Akuma an even more terrifying prospect. Akuma is an interesting character as aspects of him make it clear that he's a no goody two shoes, but he is no Bison in terms of maliciousness either. The end of Street Fighter 2 was less than satisfying. However, the cultural impact the game had on the world at the time cannot be overstated. It ushered in an era of competitive fighting with its focus on multiplayer content. It was even a story of how the game took off in the United States and was a lot slower in Japan because culturally, Japanese gamers were not as open to the idea of playing video games against strangers. With Street Fighter 2, the competitive fighting scene in Japan was born and you could even say it introduced a concept of community in Japan as strangers were now more than likely to fight one another in combat at the arcades unlike before. And with that, we bring this video to a close. This is the first of a two-part series on the history of Street Fighter. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell to ensure you don't miss any videos. Alright guys, till next time, I'm Jammers and take care of yourself out there.